Hi, my name is Wilton and I'm a product manager here at Fintel. Today I'm going to introduce to you uh, the concept of institutional put call ratios. If you've ever been to Fintel, you understand and you probably already know that Fintel provides a lot of detailed information on ownership filings. Um, ownership filings are, are filings such as 13F filings that large institutions are required to file with the SEC on a quarterly basis. And in those filings, they have to outline all of their positions at the uh, end of the quarter. So they put their stocks uh, uh, that they hold, uh, as well as put as well as put and call options in many cases. Um, if you see this chart on the top, uh, this is a historical chart of, of ownership for Tesla, and you can see that it shows a kind of a rough upward trend over time. Um, which, if you took that at, at simply face value, you might say this is a great uh, bullish indicator. And you might come to the conclusion that institutions in general all love Tesla and that it's a, quote, safe investment or, or a good investment and so forth. This is kind of how we kind of come to the idea of institutional sentiment. Institutions in general have, you know, large research budgets. And one might come to the conclusion that if you follow institutions and you look at institutional sentiment, you might make better investing decisions by taking into account what, what these um, indicators suggest. The problem is that um, a lot of institutions don't actually look at companies to decide if they're good investments before allocating money to them. A significant amount of money in the market is in index funds. An index fund is a fund that simply invests kind of mindlessly to match uh, 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 an index. So for example, the S&P index has, has the top 500 companies. Index funds will uh, allocate their money uh, in the fund based on the proportion of market caps uh, in the S&P 500. So what happens when, when a company does that or when a fund does that? Well, let's just say, for example, that Tesla, for some reason, uh, uh, the share price goes up a significant amount. Well, what that means is that the market cap of Tesla goes up as well. And if the market cap of Tesla goes up significantly, in comparison to the other companies in the S&P 500, then the index funds have to increase their allocation of Tesla in their own funds. And that's going to put buying pressure on Tesla. And that means that the share price of Tesla might go up because all those index funds have to match that allocation. And if the share price goes up because the index funds are buying, then that means the market cap goes up. And that puts further pressure on the share price of Tesla uh, and so forth. Then you get into this kind of cycle that, um, you know, if there weren't active investors setting prices, then you, then you might find that, you know, you were in a, 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 a vicious, I wouldn't say a vicious or virtuous circle, but you get into the situation where, uh, you know, the funds are actually putting pressure on their own buying uh, in a way that you might not necessarily uh, expect. So how do you solve that problem? How do you deal with the fact, how do you get a sense of institutional sentiment without having that kind of problem? Well, it turns out that um, index funds do not purchase put and call options. That's what, um, what you find is that hedge funds uh, do buy put and call options in order to hedge their bets, hedge their investments. And if you strip out all of the non-option data from the 13F filings, you end up, you can end up with a pretty different picture of institutional sentiment. The bottom right of the video shows the historical put call ratio chart for Tesla Motors. And in the top video, or in the top chart, you can see that the total institutional ownership is increasing. But if you look at the, at the bottom right, uh, put options generally indicate a negative sentiment, call options generally indicate a positive sentiment. You can see that the number of put options is increasing significantly over the number of call options, which might suggest to somebody that the actual true institutional sentiment might be negative for Tesla. So that's the little tutorial, the little um, introduction to put call options. Uh, these are available to premium subscribers on Fintel. And if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to ask in the comments and please subscribe to the channel. We'll be doing more tutorials in the future. Thank you.